All right. Uh, we have a review today. This was sent into the channel by a company I have not uh, seen before. Maybe you have uh, Abestop, A-B-E-S-T-O-P. And um, they have several products on their website. And um, they asked me if I would be interested in it. And I pointed to this one saying, yeah, I think this would be a good, a good first one for, uh, for your company. And um, it's a du dual channel oscilloscope, 100 megahertz. So, now, I know a lot of people who are interested or getting into the hobby just don't have a lot of money to spend. And an oscilloscope is just one of those essential um, things to have on the bench. Now, there are um, there are little ones, and I reviewed some in the past. They're, they're uh, these little handheld ones, and they can be fine for their particular, particular application. But I believe that as a real bench instrument, they just kind of are lacking, okay? And you kind of want to move up to something that, that, that has knobs on it and a nice large screen, and it just kind of, kind of feels the part. So, you know, it, you can get a super nice Rigol, you know, I paid $1,000 for that one. Um, and, and you're getting into the hobby, you just don't have that kind of money. So this is going to be a sub $200 oscilloscope. And, um, it is not as good as, as other oscilloscopes. It is gonna be on the lower end, but, but it does have all of the features. It has all of the knobs. It does, it does most everything that you expect the thing to do. Um, it's only gonna be eight bits and it will have some other errors and things, but I think as a first oscilloscope um, or for somebody who's just dabbling, and you're not going to use it all that often. I think this would probably be okay. So let's take a look at it. Um, it has a pretty large screen. We'll turn that on. It has a, it does have a handle that you can pick it up. It's super, super light. I mean, this thing is just really, really light. Um, and so there's not much in the back. There is a USB connector. Um, it says its power is five volts, two amps. And uh, there's a connect power connector on that side and nothing on this side, okay? So it is not uh, an AC wall cord. You actually have to supply it with DC, okay? So it comes with a, uh, let me pull it out here so you can look at it. it. Comes with one of these little wall warts, okay? This is a two amp, two amp wall wart. And so uh, let's go ahead and hook it up. My only complaint is that the cord they supply you with is fairly short. It's only about oh, maybe three feet long. So you do have to have a uh, power, so power strip nearby. But let's plug that onto here and we will turn it on. And it does come on fairly fast. Um, I'm, I'm monitoring the current over here if you can read that it's 1.15 amps right now it ru generally runs around 1.2 amps so that's the kind of power you need to uh, need to put in this thing let me lower the camera down a bit all right what comes with the instrument you do get two probes um, you get you get these probes um, now, I think this scope originally was an O1 scope, O-W-O-N, and some, there's some relationship between this ape stop and O1. I don't know what it is, but this is basically a rebedged uh, O1 oscilloscope, and the probes start with the letters O-W, so I believe they're O1 as well. Um, so uh, it does come with, like I say, two 100 megahertz probes. It comes with an instruction manual, and interestingly, it comes with a thumb drive. And so that thumb drive will come in handy. It has uh, all of the uh, user manuals in it. It also has a PC program, so you can program this thing over, over USB. Um, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not interested in that, but it does come with that program already here on the flash drive, so no need to download or anything. Um, I did scan this for viruses, it's clean, so uh, everything seems to be okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a signal. Right, hook up channel one, and we have a, we have a signal. 
and uh, it does come with uh, tools to adjust the overshoot undershoot um, and there's a, a calibrator here on the side so I've do already done that with this probe and it calibrated just fine it was what you would expect so everything looks good there you can see a little bit of uh, hash on the signal so it is only eight bits and some noise um, let's see uh, so we have normal controls uh, we have uh, uh, vertical and uh, we have uh, position um, and we have position uh, click which goes back to the center uh, and so that's good so all the buttons click um, and then we have channel one you can set AC DC coupling invert it times 10 or times one a major current I'm not sure that is and then limit which is the bandwidth you can set it to 20 megahertz bandwidth limit like you normally would um, it does have a trigger trigger level and when you turn the knob that gives you a line that's perfect that's what it should have uh, so I like that when you press it it automatically sets it to the 50 percent point which isn't very useful here because it's it's a, a, a above ground signal this would set it to ground um, and it also has the ability to zoom in. I'll show that with a different, a different signal. It has a utility, auto set, run stop, measure. Uh, so it has some uh, things you can add to channel one or channel two, add to channel one, period, frequency, peak to peak, RMS, all those types of things. So that's all standard stuff. Acquire, we have sample mode, peak detect mode, averaging, Okay, that's good. Uh, vectors or dots. Uh, persistence, you can change one second, two second. Infinity. Okay, that's good. And that, it has an XY mode, so we might have to try that out. It has a frequency counter built in. Uh, so it's all scope stuff. It, 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 if you ever run any oscilloscope, this is going to be very, very familiar. And you don't have to share anything. The, 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 the H, uh, channel one, channel two have their own separate controls. And uh, trigger has its own separate controls. Um, yeah, uh, it's just exactly what you would what you would want it to be. So let's take a look at a couple waveforms here. Uh, sine, square, ramp, pulse, noise, sync pulses. Yeah, I mean it's got everything you would want in it. Uh, let's see if it's calibrated. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to ARB load and I'll load my step file load okay so these are uh, one volt steps um, and so if we change the uh, down here it says one volt per division and then if I put these here um, it's a little bit short in calibration a uh, little bit of lack of gain, um, but it's certainly certainly very similar to other scopes that I've seen. Um, yeah, so there you go. And uh, these things are happening online, so that looks calibrated in, in Y. So yeah, we're looking we're looking good there. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do a bandwidth test on it. Get that out of the way. Uh, we might as well do it on channel. We'll do it on channel one, and then we'll uh, do both channels together and see if the bandwidth drops. So I'm going to be uh, inserting some sine wave on channel one, and it is big. So let's see here. Position, click to the middle. There we go. Um, all right, so uh, can we make it a little bit bigger? Not fall. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that basically our sine wave is about one, two, three divisions up. Okay, and we are currently at 225 um, uh, kilohertz. I will turn it up. Uh, let's turn it up here. Here's a megahertz. Um, here is. 4.6 megahertz. 
9 megahertz, 23 megahertz, uh, 42 megahertz, and we're still three divisions, so it hasn't dropped off yet. Here's 97 megahertz, it still hasn't dropped off yet. We're starting to get a little bit of jitter in the triggering. So again, it's only an 8-bit machine, so you can expect this. Um, so let's put triggering here at zero, and you do see it, it is fluctuating a little bit. That's at 97. Let's go up here to 100. Okay, that's exactly 100 megahertz. And so it's holding up for um, bandwidth. Let's go ahead and creep up a little bit farther. Yeah, and it's starting to drop now. So it's starting to drop around 130 megahertz. So it's doing really uh, honest an honest 100 megahertz. So, but it does have that it does have that trigger trigger jitter. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's only a, it's only an 8 bit machine. So uh, these things are to be expected. That's 25 megahertz. All right, so we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and turn on channel two. Um, I'll go ahead and put this over in channel two just so it's getting something. And uh, then let's go ahead and go up in frequency again. Here's 102 megahertz. So even with channel two on, it still has the full, full bandwidth. Um, so we are doing good. We are doing good there. All right, let's turn off channel two, bang. All right, so that's gone. Let's go back to the signal over here. Let's try auto set, see if, uh, see if it can do, do the auto set thing. It, that, there it goes, it gave, us a, it gave us an auto set on that. Okay, um, okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is some um, digital things. Well, everybody's, nobody, nobody seems to be doing analog anymore, everybody's doing digital, and, but it's, scopes are still good for that. Um, so let's go ahead and look at a digital clock signal. Click this down, there we go. Click this in here so we can see a whole bunch of data. There's some clocks. Okay, so here we go. We have a whole bunch of clocks. Okay, so I'm going to put it here so we can look at a, a, a large event. Okay, and then I'm going to push this button here, which it says horizontal, but it's to zoom. So we can zoom in on, on particular things. And we're zooming in, oops, we're zooming in a little too fine there. There we go. So, uh, so we are looking at some events from this. Now, this is one of the few errors that I've seen on this oscilloscope. And um, again, I just believe it's because it's an 8-bit machine. So let me, let me zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, let me zoom in here and let me do a run stop. Okay, so um, if you see, this has nice flat ones and zeros, but here it's got a little overshoot and then a little undershoot, a little undershoot and a little overshoot. Now, those are artifacts of the sampling technique of the oscilloscope. So it's sampling the waveform, and then it has to interpolate that data to make it smooth and not jagged. And it does that with something called, I think it's sine x over x uh, is the function. Um, and it can cause little ringing on edges if it isn't done well, or if you're reaching Nyquist and other things like that. And we see some artifacts here. Now, I don't know if software can get rid of these things. Um, they may want to look at this. If we go to, uh, let's turn this back on. If I go to acquire and I turn off vector and I go to dots, yeah, it's still there in dots, which, is strange to me. Why is it overshooting and undershooting in dots? There's something not quite right in this yet. So anyway, um, if you turn on dots, it should get rid of sampling, but maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe the sampling happens before the ability to go to dots or vector. Anyway, it doesn't do that. Uh, type dots, vector. Okay, we'll go back to vector. Uh, okay, let's turn that off. Anyway, but it does have the zoom function, and I can do something like I can zoom out a bit here. Let's zoom out to this far. I can do run stop. Once I have this whole chain here, then I can I can I can scroll through the data, which is a really really handy feature. So this is 
This is, uh, used to be for high-end scopes right back in the day. Uh, but yeah, it's got, so it's got a pretty good memory depth. Um, you can capture, capture quite a bit. And if I click it, it should go to zero. Yeah, it does. So yeah, so that all working really, really good. And for digital signals, do you care about the overshoot, undershoot? You might, but if you're just looking for the data packets and stuff like that, maybe this is fine for you. But it's something I think they should improve on. Um, it does have the ability to store data. Um, it does have a, a copy button. I hit copy, event saved. Uh, okay. Uh, copy. Event saved. All right. Well, let's get rid of this and let's get rid of that. And let's go out here and let's push one. Copy. Event saved. So now imagine that it's in there somewhere. Um, and can we go get to it? Uh, not there. Not there. Acquire? No. Cursor? No. Force? Copy? No. I don't know. Maybe you have to hook it up to their program to, in order to get it out. Uh, there is a USB connector on the front, and I would have hoped you could just save things to the uh, to the front USB connector. Let me have a quick glance at the manual here and see if it does have that. I did take a quick look at the manual. I didn't see it right offhand. I don't know if that's available or not, but it would be nice if they could add that function. When you hit copy, it automatically takes a picture of the screen and puts it on the uh, USB drive here. Um, yeah, so anyway, there you go. That's my review of the uh, ApeStop DS1102. Um, it seems as though it, it fits a particular price point. Um, if you could spend twice as much, you're going to get a lot of functionality. Um, if you can only spend half as much, then you're kind of in the realm of these handheld ones that I showed. Uh, this is kind of a medium spot, so it's kind of priced in, gosh, I want something better than my handheld oscilloscope, but I can't afford the other ones. Uh, you know, and for somebody, like I said, somebody who's just doing it occasionally, I think it's a great place to start. I would be tickled pink to have had this oscilloscope when I first started, <laughs> just started doing electronics, so I think it's, I think it's quite acceptable. All right, and just to leave you with the uh, XY mode, I've put in my uh, circuit and we can look at uh, the XY mode. It is limited, it's not full screen. I don't know how to make it full screen, um, but it is giving you, uh, it is giving you the, uh, I'm changing the, the uh, horizontal sweep to see, we'll get more and more data on the screen when you do that. So, I mean, it does give you XY. I, I see no problem with that. This is just, you know, XY uh, in time, and then this is X versus Y. And uh, so it does function.